Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today I'm joined by Felipe Hickman, a PhD candidate at the University of Laval. So Felipe, before we get started, would you mind telling the audience a little bit about your background? Yes, yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm originally from Brazil, born and raised in a pig farm, and I did my, my undergrad and master thesis in URGS in Brazil. And now I'm about to finish my PhD at University of Laval, Canada, and I'm working on the environmental impacts of pig production. Gotcha. So one of those uh, studies that you've done about the environmental impacts um, so I saw you did a study on the impact of dietary protein or crude protein level on pig manure nitrogen content and how that impacts potential anaerobic digestion. Um, so to start, what does all that mean and why is it important to the swine industry? Yeah, we have seen that feeding is important. It accounts for about 60% of the environmental impacts of pig production, followed by manure management by 20%. So feeding is important and we want to address by using novel feeding strategies like lowering crude proteins, enzyme supplementation and precision feeding. Today I will be presenting some of my projects that are related on the impact of uh, pig nutrition on manure management. So we investigate what would be the impact of lowering crude protein in biogas production, ammonia volatilization and greenhouse gas emissions. In our first trial, we try to investigate what would be the impact of lowering those crude protein levels. So we have a control treatment, one treatment that uh, reduces 1.2% and the other that reduces 2.4% of the crude protein levels in the diet. And we want to investigate what's the daily impact on the biogas production and also in its quality in terms of the methane, CO2, and N2S that's being produced. So for that, I, first, I want to first address two things. The first is the about of manure scratch, the impact of manure scratch. In the literature, most studies uh, point out that a reduction in the crude protein has a linear, degree, the, the, a linear decrease in the manure, in the nitrogen, is being squeezed, but it really depends on the nitrogen levels that's being fed to the animals. For example, if you're using uh, uh, close to the requirements or a little bit under the requirements, those animals may increase the feed intake and all thus increase the amount of nitrogen that's being squeezed. So it really depends what's the amount of crude protein that's being fed to the animals. The other thing, okay, from an environmental point of view, it's good to reduce the amount of nitrogen that's being excreted, that's being going, that's going to the environment. But if you want to use as a fertilizer, we want a, a manure that's rich in manure, rich in nitrogen, rich in phosphorus, that's rich in nutrients. So there is a little bit trade-off, and we, when you see from this point of view, we have seen in the. In the trial about biogas production that we put those manure, those different manure nitrogen contents in the biodigesters, that if you are reducing the nitrogen content of those manure, we are also reduce the amount of biogas that's being produced, but also the quality in terms of the proportion of the gases, especially methane, that's the, our main goal when you produce biogas compared to the, to the other gases. So we are lowering the biogas production and we are low, also lowering the biogas quality because in this case, nitrogen was affecting the microbes because the carbon nitrogen ratio is very important for the bacteria. So if you are reducing the nitrogen, we are affecting the bacteria, the, how they can uh, digest the man, those manure. So this is the main result from our first trial, the impact on biogas. The second thing that I want to discuss with you, what's the first thing that you consider when you think about manure? So most people think about being feces, but manure is much more than feces. It's also urine, some dead material, water, and some wasted uh, feed. So there is much more variability if you consider manure as a fertilized source compared to minerals like urea. So for the, the other 
experiment that we did, we want to evaluate the ammonia volatilization because one of the goals of using the manure as fertilizer is to use that manure to fulfill the plant requirements. So use that nitrogen for plants. But if you are trying to reduce those nitrogen content in the, the manure, you may affect the amount of manure that you need to apply in the farmland. So for that try, that uh, experiment, we want to investigate what's the losses through ammonia volatilization. So we want to use the, that nitrogen for the plant and not lose as a form of ammonia. So we investigate what's the impact of the nitrogen level, like control local protein, the manure type, if it's raw or coming from the anaerobic digestion, and also what's the nitrogen form, so is like urea or is uh, manure. And we have seen that there was no difference between nitrogen levels because those manure were applied to reach the same nitrogen recommendation. So it's just a matter of the volume that we are applying to reach that recommendation. And we have seen that the manure coming from the anaerobic digestion is more prone to volatilization because uh, the bacteria, because the mineralization. So the manure is more prone to, being, to be lost through ammonia, ammonia volatilization. And the other thing that is very interesting, uh, the losses from the mineral source. So if you are applying uh, urea, untreated urea, we found that about 25% of the nitrogen that you are, you are applying, we are losing through ammonia volatilization. And this loss is just about 4% for manure. So for manure is a good from an environmental point of view, but also from an economic point of view, because you are not losing what you are applying in the field. So this is the main findings for our second experiment that works with manure. Our third experiment works about the impact of low crude protein and nitrogen source and manure type on greenhouse gas emissions. So we evaluate three different gas and each gas has a different pattern. For example, methane, if you apply in the field, uh, there is like after applying, there are a lot of oxygen, so you lose all of your methane just some hours after applying the manure, which is completely different from the N2O uh, emission. So you have like a small emission and then you increase the amount of N2O that's been lost and then you reduce. And for the CO2, it's a little bit more slowly over time. So each gas has a different pattern when you are trying to analyze those emissions. But we have seen that, again, no difference between uh, nitrogen level. It's just a matter of uh, the amount of nitrogen that you are applying. But some difference between the nitrogen form. For example, manure has a more methane emission that, um, than the urea. But again, it always depends on the experimental design that we are considering. So it really depends on the gas and really depends what you are testing in those experiments. So overall, this work is more like interdisciplinary. So we are working on novel strategies, novel feeding strategies to mitigate environmental impacts. And one example is low crude protein and to see what's the impact on the manure the amount that's being treated, but also the production of biogas, the monopolization, and the greenhouse gas emissions. We are also working with other projects like enzyme supplementation, what's the impact on performance and also and, in emissions, and also in other projects about precision feeding. So the topic is quite large, but today I just want to touch some of the experiments that we, we work on the impact of manure. Gotcha. So one question I had is that in one of the abstracts, you mentioned that when feeding low crude protein diets, which then reduces the amount of nitrogen in the manure, um, it could potentially, if you don't, from what you're saying, if you don't apply enough of it um, to the crops that you're trying to grow, that it could fail to meet the requirement for some of those fast growing crops. Have there been or has there been any work done on the amount of um, nitrogen in the manure required to fulfill the nitrogen requirement of those crops? Or I guess I was just curious on um, how large of an impact that can have 
if you kind of under supplement the manure um, onto the fields? Yeah, it's a good question, but it comes back to what I was talking about, the trade-off. So when you are considering like a low coupon team manure, you need to apply more. So you need like a greater volume of that manure. But as I mentioned, volume, uh, the manure has a lot of variability. So it, it, it sometimes varies the manure concentration that you are applying this this space compared to the, the other space. So there are much more variability in the manure composition compared to mineral filter fertilizers. So I would say that there are some benefits from using manure. I would say direct and indirect. The direct is fulfilling the plant requirements. So you just need to change what's your criteria and change the volume, but also some indirect benefits of using the manure. So you are increasing the amount of organic matter, you are increasing that uh, the microbes in the, in the soil. So there are a lot of other benefits uh, that they last over seasons. It's not, not only the benefits in that season, that usually when you use mineral fertilizer, but you also have some indirect benefits over time. So last question I have for you is in terms of this line of research, what would be the, the next steps for your team in terms of what the next studies you think you would look at? So this project was mainly about nitrogen. So lowering nitrogen, in the diets, what's the impact uh, of low crew protein levels. The next step is doing the same thing for phosphorus. So what's the impact of low phosphorus for the performance of the animals, for the amount of phosphorus that's being excreted, and also the use as a fertilizer source. So what's the impact? Because some, some places they use nitrogen or they use phosphorus as a criteria to apply the manure in the farmland. So for example, if you apply based on phosphorus, you need a lower amount of manure and then summon other sources of nitrogen to fulfill the requirements. So it's like a, a complementary project that we, we also want to work on. Gotcha. Well, I believe that's all we have time for. So thank you again, Felipe, for coming on the show and sharing all this with us. Thank you. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. <laughs>